the power of Grayskull. For children growing up in the 1980s, He-Man was like no other action figure they've ever seen. A muscle-bound hero truly ready for battle. With knees bent and arms flexed, He-Man and his team defending the universe against the evil minions of his archenemy, Skeletor. Store shelves were flooded with collectibles. Kids and adults alike couldn't wait to get their hands on them. Transcending nearly 40 years in our mainstream pop culture. But where did it all begin? Created in 1981 from the concept art from illustrator Mark Taylor and Roger Sweet, channeling the fantasy paintings of Frank Frenzetta and turning a simple big gym action figure into a muscle-bound barbarian, Roger Sweet presented the He-Man concept. The models were a barbarian, a soldier, and a spaceman. Out of the three concepts, the barbarian version He-Man was chosen to be the basis of the toy line. From early sketches and concepts, the final products came out quite close to what they envisioned, with brief descriptions of the characters would appear on the toy line's unique packaging and incredible box art accompanied by mini comics, with each figure exploring the lore of Masters of the Universe. Mattel also hired comic book writers such as Donald F. Glutt and artists like Earl Norum to create additional characters, their backstory, posters, package inlays, box art, the first wave to hit the market was the 8-back, featuring man and arms Zodiac, Skeletor, Merman, Stratos, Beastman, Teela, and of course, He-Man. However, the Masters of the Universe franchise would become better known through Filmation's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series. In the fall of 1983, running 130 episodes through two seasons until the end of 1984, followed in the spring of 1985 by the theatrically released The Secret of the Sword, introducing He-Man's long-lost sister, She-Ra, which then followed in Mattel's toy line, Princess of Power, aimed at bringing in a young female demographic. You go away and play. Shira's our adventure game. <laughs> when danger is near, call for Shira, the princess of power, and her friends. Having amassed 70 plus figures in the He Man line and 30 plus for Shira, with various accessories and vehicles, plus lending their merchandising rights to hundreds of different items, from board games to magazines to children's books, they made everything, which was also released worldwide. In present day, we have seen a resurgence in the Masters of the Universe line from companies like Matty Collector, keeping the franchise alive in the 90s, and also Super 7, taking the line to new heights in our current day. And let's not forget Sideshow Collectibles and Pop Culture Shock, breathing new life in our beloved characters from my childhood in the high-end range of collectibles. For me, I'll always treasure my memories from He-Man, from my themed birthday parties to the joy of getting figures for Christmas and my birthday, it was definitely a time to grow up. Stay tuned for the loudest adventure in the universe. He-Man, most powerful man on Eternia, now has a mighty Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch He-Man's loaded with caps and ready for battle with the evil Spycorn. Spycorn's fearsome and gruesome with his deadly spikes, huge club and telescopic weapon arm. Has He-Man finally met his match? No! With a from Thunder Punch He-Man, Spycorn down. And good wins again in Mattel's Masters of the Universe. My name's Draz and that was Classic Collectibles. If you like that and want to see more from us at So Is It Any Good, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below with your favourite toy line from the 80s. And maybe you'll just see it in the next upcoming episode of Classic Collectibles.